Welcome back to Angling Buzz Ice. I'm your host, Jake Wallace, and today we're hunting down perch. Now, perch are a favorite to chase across the ice belt for a couple reasons. The first is once you find one, you can count there's gonna be a bunch nearby, and the second is they make a great table fare. Now perch tend to spread out on massive flats, feeding on minnows, freshwater shrimp, and crayfish. Whether you fish shallow or deep flats, the best way to find perch is to cut a series of holes a long distance apart. Check each hole for perch and stay on the move. Once you've found a big school of jumbos, cut a number of holes in that area. An AquaView underwater camera is a great way to find perch in shallow, clear water situations. Now, once you slide to deeper water, that's when 2D sonar is going to be the thing to use. You can use the zoom feature to identify bottom hugging perch. Now, one thing about perch is they school by size. So if you can find one jumbo, you can sure bet there's going to be more nearby. Now we're gonna join Jeremy Smith on Leech Lake, one of Minnesota's best perch fishing destinations. That is a keeper anyway. Look at that, don't even have to reel. <laughs> Not a magnum, but this lake has a lot of these and that's really one of the fun parts about the shallow water bite is I am using a fish finder, but you, you don't have to use a fish finder. And it seems like there's two strategies to catch them out here. One is, which I prefer to do, is just cut a lot of holes and walk and move and you'll land in a hole and boom, they're there and they bite. But the other is to just sit and wait it out and it's a great opportunity to sight fish. In fact, uh, up here a couple of years ago, Jimmy and Jake did a piece on uh, sight fishing perch in the shallow waters. Look at this, look at this. Look at this. Now you're talking. Now that's what you call a whopper perch. It's a really fun thing to do, and I know a lot of guys enjoy fishing both pike and, you know, in the shallow water too. So there's great opportunities for perch shallow this time of year. And, you know, you can either just walk around, hold a hole, let, you know, this much line out, wait for a fish to bite, cut a hole in the ice and watch them. Or in this case, I'm actually using my fish finder, though I'm not seeing a lot of the bigger fish because they just come in from the side and, and crack it. These are some nice perch. They really are. It's pretty cool to find these these days. They're just not everywhere. Well, this, granted, this isn't a magnum magnum perch, but I would say anywhere you're at in Minnesota, you're going to be pretty happy to have a run of fish like this. that aren't coming from some shallow slough with worms. Just nice, nice perch. That's a great fish right there. So. You know, this program in the shallow water does not really require the super high-end electronics to do it. Really one of the best tools that i found is to just jump on Google Earth and the water is clear enough in a lot of the images where you can see like little breaks in the sand where it goes from weeds to sand. And a lot of those edges are great travel routes for fish and of course edges are just great places to, to fish. So I look at a lot of aerial imagery and then of course you really should have a map of, of the lake because you'll see that a lot of times as well it's those subtle little changes in the flat you might see a, where a, a spot where it goes from like five six feet where there's a you know seven eight foot hole or there's a four foot hump in a, in a six foot flat so those can be other really good areas to look at so this is actually a time of year when you could go out without electronics look at google earth on your phone and just go a whole hop drop three feet of line out down and and lift up fish but I would definitely recommend though having the Lake Master Chip for leech because it does show you a lot of detail and it's when you're fishing those flats, it's the edges, it's the subtle depth changes that often hold the majority of the fish. Oh. That's a good one. There we go. Not a huge one, but those bigger ones just come in and smash it. 
You do, I would definitely recommend if you're doing this. Leech Lake has so many perch in it. Ooh, look at, looks like he got bit by a pike or something like that. There's so many perch in it that if you do fish with small panfish jigs and like a waxworm or a Euro larvae, you are gonna catch a zillion perch that are this big. So I would recommend with going with something that's a little bit bigger. So of course I mentioned I really love the jig and wrap, but a lot of times ripping wraps, rattle baits are great. You know, walleye sized jigging spoons, a rat, you know, some type of a rattle spoon is another, you know, another great option. But bigger to me is better for catching catching the bigger perch and it just seems like you're not having to deal with all those little ones because believe me they can be a nuisance there's tons and tons of them basically everywhere you go on this lake there are small perch in the system so having something bigger definitely selects for the larger fish Oh, nice one. Just dropped it down. I, that's the great example of not even knowing they're here. It's what's so fun about the shallow waters, those big ones coming in blasted. Who doesn't like that? There you go. Nice perch. Yeah. Not huge, but that's a great eater. I'm going to get down there right away because often those bigger, bigger ones tend to run in, run in packs. I never did see that. Uh, fish on the depth finder just came in and blasted it. That's what's so cool about this. And I, I've seen a lot of times too, if you're up up here doing this shallow water deal, that it does seem like early, especially early morning, like sunrise to, you know, maybe, you know, a couple hours after, seems like it's a really good window. And then as you, uh, as you get later into the day, it seems like the action does slow down and these fish just lay down in those weeds. So they're just, they're just not up up rolling around so much so that's why a lot of times drilling a lot of holes you're kind of pushing a few fish around and then you might just get lucky and land close enough to one where they'll oop there's another nice one where they'll jump on it and that's another another fantastic fish the other cool thing about leech is that they have put um, special regs on the lake so it's no longer you know, come out here and keep your 20 sunfish and your 10 crappies and your 20 perch. They put the special regs on, so they they're doing a really good job to manage this for panfish because it is uh, often thought of as a great walleye musky fishery. But Leech is one of the state's most premier panfish lakes for perch, sunfish, and big big crappies. So pretty exciting, in my opinion, to see the lake be managed for quality panfish. Also, I say that as I'm throwing perch on the ice. To eat. Nice. Boom. See if I can keep them on the ice. Not a big one, but a nice one. All right. That's the only disadvantage to the jig and wrap. Where does he get some tanglage every once in a while? He's right on the bubble of keeping. So if I had to pick one bait, now this is just me, right? So everybody has different levels of confidence but in the winter time like my go-to if I'm just fishing for anything it would be the size 3 jig and wrap right here and I just put a little bit bigger hook on this so I've caught tons of perch on this big crappies like biting this walleyes will bite it ciscos and whitefish will bite it so this happens to be my confidence bait and the other thing I like about the jigging wrap as opposed to the spoon is if I do have a fish take the bait off the bottom hook, the bait is still fishing really good. It's still got that darting action. So a lot of guys like using spoons or just a, a jig, but I find that this definitely keeps the smaller fish away and will catch a lot of those other bonus species as well. But definitely, if you're doing this, I would upsize that treble hook, just go one size up on the bottom, and that really does seem to help with a lot more hookups. Ooh, shoot, this is gonna be a good one. Yep. That's a nice one. Oh yeah, that is the deal right there, huh? That's so awesome. Little fish, little fish, little fish, little fish, and then whopper. That's a good perch. That's a nice perch, huh? Mm -hmm. I like it. You just got such pretty fins up here. It's one of the things I love the most about them. All right. I think that's probably gonna. Probably going to be the last one we keep. It's not quite a limit, but that's 
going to be 20. So I'll just share with you the setup that I've got going right now for doing this perch fishing. It's actually a walleye setup and like I'd mentioned there's a good chance that we might run into walleyes out here or pike or even maybe a big whitefish or ciscos. So I'm, I'm fishing with a, a, a walleye rod. So this is St. Croix's CCI. This is the deep spoon rod. This rod is a 32 inch. It's a medium light power fast action. So it's just really that ideal setup for fishing. You know you're kind of eighth ounce spoons, size three a jig and wrap like I've got here or a small rip and wrap and I've got this spooled up with four pound suffix advanced mono it's got a little roller swivel there to a little uh, six pound fluorocarbon leader and that's really the setup so it's pretty simple I've got it on a 1000 size Daiwa reel I talk about this all the time but I really think that 1000 size is a sweet size for a lot of stuff especially outside your line management is so much better and believe it or not, that the weight, let's say you fished a, a 1,000 size and you wanted to jump up to even a 2,000 size in ice fishing, the weight of the reels is exactly the same. So you're getting better line management, a better drag, and it's just, to me, an all-around better reel, especially for fishing outside. So I like going with the bigger, bigger setup personally. I'm amazed at how much life is still in the shallows during the early ice period, whether you know we're on leech like we are now, but even a lot of the, the smaller lakes, we've had some of our best ice fishing bites of the year in those shallow, weedy bays that are six, eight, you know, six, eight feet deep. And even on leech here in this three, four, five, six feet of water, run into pike, lake whitefish, tulipy, of course, perch, run into some sunfish and crappies, bass in certain areas of the lake. So it is quite remarkable how many fish are still using this shallow water and you know leech has so much sand grass and there's some spots that have you know milfoil or elodea sometimes cabbage in a few spots but the bottom in many cases is just just crawling with little rusty crayfish in this type of habitat so there's a lot of food of course there's a number of other invertebrates that are down there too but there's a lot of food up here and there's plenty of oxygen with that weed growth even in these shallow areas uh, of the lake so don't be surprised if you're up fishing the shallow stuff if you run into a big walleye a whitefish a cisco you know a pike or what, whatever it might be whatever swims in here will use this type of habitat early and late now there's a ton of different baits you can use for perch but i got a couple favorites for when perch are aggressive or negative let me show them to you now when perch are aggressive i like to use big baits so i like spoons i've got the north and glass buckshot spoon the clam pinhead pro and the vmc bull spoon now I'll pair these with the minnow head and they work great when fish are aggressive. Some minnow profile baits I like to use when perch are really going are the Rapala Jigging Wrap, the Northland Puppet Minnow, and the Clam Tika Flash. Now those you don't have to pair with live bait but they do work good with it. And when fish are in that negative mood, right, they're lethargic, they're slow, they don't want to eat those bigger baits, that's when I switch to my jigs. So I've got the VMC Mongo Jig, the Clam Drop Kick, the Northland Mud Bug, and the VMC Larvae Jig. Now, what all these jigs have in common is a stout hook, and that's really key when fishing for perch, because perch have a big mouth, so I like that stout hook. I can still pair a plastic or live bait on it, and they just really work for perch. Now, some of you are asking, what are some great perch fishing destinations? And if I had to name a few, I'd start with North Dakota, Devil's Lake, and Stump Lake. Both are fantastic perch fisheries. Now the Mississippi backwater south of Minneapolis also has to make the list because they're pumping out a ton of jumbos every year. And if we're going to talk about giant fish, it's hard to beat Cascade Lake in Idaho. It's truly an amazing fishery for ginormous yellow perch. Now in Wisconsin, there's Green Bay and Lake Winnebago. And in South Dakota, you've got the prairie pothole region that's famous for perch fishing. Now here in our home state of Minnesota, Mille Lacs Lake, Leech Lake, and Lake Winnebagosh are all fantastic perch fisheries. Next we'll join Jeremy Smith as he shows you how to clean perch with an electric knife. Over the years I've eaten a lot of fish from both fresh and salt water and hands down one of my favorite freshwater fish has to be the yellow perch. And anybody who's done a perch trip knows that when you get on them you can end up with a big pile of fish and that means a lot of work on the back end. So I'm going to show you how we go through a mess of perch using an electric fillet knife to get 
the fillets off the fish and also get the rib cage out and then using a smaller knife like this to get the pin bones out so when everybody's having a delicious perch fry, you're not gonna be having any bones. So let's get started. Beautiful yellow perch here. Now, with the Bubba Blades electric fillet knife, there's four blade choices. I'm starting with the smallest and most flexible blade they've got. This is ideal for perch and other panfish. So first thing we gotta do is make sure our safety is off. The knife is hot and let's get started. We're just gonna start with an incision right behind the gill plate here, just in front of the peck, and we'll go all the way down until we hit the spine. Here we go. Boom, you can see that. We made that cut. Now we're just gonna turn, follow the knife, turn it 90 degrees, and we'll follow that spine all the way down the length of the fish. And the big thing here is you just wanna make sure you, you don't cut through the backbone. If you do that, you're gonna damage the fillet on the other side, but just ripping right through there, it's pretty easy to follow down. I'll reverse this and we'll get going on the next side. So flop the fish over and repeat the same process. Here we go, come down, cut down. Sometimes it's just gotta get that belly meat cut. Cut right down to the back. There we go, fall it right down the edge of the fish. Got all of that out of there, we'll get rid of the guts. And now if you're going through a mess of fish, what I like to do is I'll just set these fillets off to the side like this and I'll keep going through that same step where I'll just keep cutting the sides off of the fish and then lastly I'll come back, I'll take the ribs out and then I would do a final step where I take the pin bones out. But for this example, I'll just show you how I get the rib cage out followed by how you take the pin bones out. So with the rib cage, you're just gonna come in here and you're gonna follow right along the top of it and you can see that the ribs, they come out on the fish but they go down on the fillet. So you just basically wanna scoop those out with the fillet knife. So it's kind of a scooping action. And the pin bones that we'll cut out later are right, right in here, right beneath. So when you, you're gonna basically come straight down, you're gonna cut through those pin bones, and you're gonna wanna follow that right back up. See, I'm just, basically I'm turning the knife up to avoid losing as, I wanna keep as much meat as I can. So we're just kinda coming up, you see that? How that works, I'm doing it slow just for the, for the process. Now once that's done, this fillet knife is real grippy, so what you can do is you can just push the rest of the ribs out. You don't actually need to cut through that. Once you've cut the, the pin bones and released it from the flesh, you can just push those right out. And now lastly, we're gonna take the hide off. So I'll just put my index finger down on the tail. I'll start the knife. And the whole key here is you wanna be close to the edge of the table here. You don't wanna be having it away from you because you can see the handle's large and you don't wanna be flexing the knife because you're gonna lose a little on one side or the other. So have this close to the edge where you can run just perfectly perpendicular to the cutting surface and we'll just rip right down the edge of it. So you can see there, that's the other great thing about an electric knife like that, there's no waste left on the hide. So now, if we want, we'll get the pin bones out. And these pin bones, they run right along through, right along through here, basically the lateral line. Some people call this zippering uh, pin bones, epi bones is what you'll hear called, but basically you, you really want to get these out because they aren't the most pleasurable to eat. Some people don't really care, but I like making sure that if I'm having guests over or anybody that might not like little bones in their fish, it's as tasty as can be. So you can, you can just cut that little piece out right there, zip it off, and you've got a filet that is absolutely boneless. Now a lot of times when we cook fish anyway, we'll just finish cutting this right right down the lateral line there, and we'll have two different fillets that we can either cut up into smaller chunks or just cook like that. Those perch are going to be delicious. I look forward to having people over every year to do a big perch fry. Now, the straight edge knife is something, and of course, every fisherman needs to have, and it does a lot of the day in, day out work. However, if you're cutting big fish, or you're going through a lot of fish like perch, an electric fillet knife like this is something that every sportsman needs in their arsenal. Man, an electric knife sure makes cleaning a batch of perch easy. Now make sure to like and subscribe this video. We'll be releasing new content each week and you don't want to miss it. Thanks for watching and stay safe out on the ice.